Okay, good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, May 1st, 1st, 2023, Town of Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, with us on my left is Flo Smith. Dave Sawyer is here via Zoom. Uh, to my right is Tor Nelson and Joe Staub. With us also is Vince Connie, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? I happen to have a couple of additions. Uh, I admitted putting on the uh, agenda the uh, mowing, roadside mowing bid. Uh, they will be back today. We received one. Um, I'd like to, like to include that. And then uh, I received a note from uh, the state uh, AOT regarding the Riverton Route 12 bridge and the sidewalk and they're looking for an agreement in writing from us regarding the winter maintenance. Just to, so I'd like to just quickly discuss that with the board as well. Okay, and you said Tim was going to be in here? Tim is with us. Okay. Um, public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Micaiah Burrington, right away, permit? Yes, this is the one that we we talked about at the last meeting that we rescheduled. They they weren't able to make it, and uh, we really wanted Tim to meet and speak with them, and he has. Uh, so Tim, I know you're here. Do you want to uh, bring them on your discussion? <laughs> or not? You're muted, Tim. Now can you hear me? There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, I spoke with them a few days after that last meeting, but um, they weren't very clear on what they were exactly going to do when I spoke with them because I don't, I don't think they wanted to lose both entrances or to lose their existing entrance add so there was a few options that were discussed was that they might just make their driveway that they have now currently bigger or move to the new entrance and take out the old entrance um, I don't believe they're on here tonight again are they no they're, they're not here again um, when I left it he was going to let me know he was going to talk with the contractor that's doing the work. Um, and he was going to let me know on what option they were going to pick. And I haven't heard from them yet. I know there was an excavator there last week on by today. It's, everything's gone now. So they haven't done any of the drainage work that they were going to do. <laughs> I assume they're coming back at some point. So. Uh Tim, they were also, I didn't hear you mention this, but uh, they were unaware of the, uh, the state changing that intersection off Route 12 as well, correct? They were not aware of that? Not, 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 they were not aware of it when they were, when they filed for this permit, no. They're aware of it now. Right. You made them aware of that. Yeah. And, you know, it's it sounded like they want to add more parking because if they have any visitors, they have to park on the side of Chandler Road. And that's what they were trying to change the driveway is was to add for more parking. But uh, he was discussing, we discussed about him potentially removing some of the fence in front of the house and making their front entrance a little wider and then making the driveway bigger in front of their house. And, um, like I said, I don't, at this point, I don't know which option they're going to go with, if they're going to leave the existing and make it bigger or move, move the driveway up the hill. So they, it, they really it, haven't given us a, a definitive answer. Sure. on. Okay. Uh, so I, I have a question here. The permit says the construction of a new driveway and eliminate the old. So I don't see options here. Honestly, were they the ones that supplied the, the, the picture, the 
Google Earth picture of some sort? Yep. Okay. So I don't, I don't necessarily see that this permit has options. I mean, just the, the permit itself is to eliminate one and, and create a new. Well, I think, I think they were under the influence that they were going to be able to keep and have some sort of loop driveway. Well, I don't see loop, and I see no. eliminate. Yeah, I know. And they also include under the description of work to be done, excavate old drive and new culverts. But they also include that the construction of the new driveway was to eliminate the old drive for safety. Did they speak to you about their concerns regarding safety? It was the, it was mainly the parking. They have no parking, so if they have guests, they park on the side of like the end of their driveway and somewhat out in front where the white fence is. That was their safety concerns. And he has a construction trailer for his work that he parks next or in front of his garage. And like when he's backing it in, he's out kind of in the road. But he wasn't, like I said, he he bounced around a little bit on which way he wanted to go. If they were they were not going to do a new driveway, if they were just going to make bigger parking in front of their house and keep the existing driveway, like he was back and forth when we when we spoke about what their better options could be. Um, well, uh, I mean, until they know what the state's going to do, I think they're going to be in flux anyway. Well, I think if you knowing that site and the state going to redo that 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 intersection right there on Chandler Road, I think if they leave it where it's at, they're going to have a longer driveway anyways, once that's reconstructed, if it stays on that lower end of the house. Yeah, my assumption is, is if they if the state is going to bring that road over, narrow it up to one, you know, an actual just left and right intersection, like I explained to him, like that whole where the road is now is going to be turned into grass or potentially could be added on for parking for them or whatnot. Like, I don't know how, I'm sure the state is going to keep it as their right away. I'm sure they're not going to deed anything back over to the adjacent landowners. No, but that being said, if, if that Chandler road comes down and it, turns a little to the right to you know to, to square that up and their driveways on that lower end the state just can't block them off right there that's going to give them a longer driveway to to still be on Chandler Road because they're not going to want to exit onto uh onto the main highway there yeah you know what I mean like I like my envision would be if they're going to change it they're going to extend the guardrails around the corner so people can't just shoot across the grass or miss the corner and and go out there so they would probably have to move their driveway onto chandler road it would just be a lot at this road. point at this point is it is it the best solution to go back to them and say you know right now um it's not approved uh we want to wait until they determine what their final design is going to look like before we can approve it and they're waiting on to see what route what's going to happen with the route 12 and how far that's going to move i'm sure at this point uh, but yeah uh, to, to joe's point right it says remove and replace that's not what they're planning on doing right now so they're going to have to redo this permit for what they actually want to do anyway correct well i mean there's multiple solutions that could come out of this but we're just guessing right now if, as far as i got from them like if they're not going to put in that new driveway they're going to use the existing one they are and make a parking area in front of their house on their lawn. Right, but that's not on this permit. So either way, they have to redo the permit. And I don't think that you're going to give them two curb cuts to their property anyway. So it'll be just the one. I would hold off until until we know what's happening on that intersection, personally. That was... Dave, Dave, is that a, mo a motion to table? I, that That's what... My motion would be: I would table this until till we've got more information, uh, either from them or from the state. 
on what's happening on that entrance. That was my recommendation right from the start was we should wait until there's a, an actual definitive answer from VTrans on what that intersection is going to look like, where everything's going to be, and how much is going to change there before we do this and people spend money and then it has to all get ripped back up because it's not going to fit into the scope of work that they're planning on doing there. Well, since we have a motion, do I have a second? Second. second. Now we can have a discussion. <laughs> Is it, it, so, Tim, basically, when you talked to them, they weren't clear on, on just what they were going to do? No. No. It, he was going back and forth. Like, they were going to put that entrance in temporarily, at least, to access the property for the equipment and the dump truck yeah, to do the work. <clears throat> but then when they were there this past weekend, they just took the fence down and they came in from the driveway with the excavator and did what they did out front. And um, the excavator was gone today when I went by there. So I don't know what they're... I don't think they know what they're going to do yet. Yeah. Well, so I... the uh, any other discussion on this? Comments? All those in favor of tabling? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, can you reach out to them and explain what's going on? Yes. And maybe they'll have a better idea. Yep. Um, okay, police approved vacation carryover. Okay, there were a number of questions uh, regarding what was in the contract and such. In your uh, handouts and what I sent you, there's uh, there's the information that clarifies exactly what's in the contract, what can be carried over. And how much are they asking to carry over? They were asking to carry over an additional 40 hours. Additional 40 hours for one year? Yep. Due to military commitments and right for the things that yeah, I think there's a family leave and a military yes, leave. Yes, there's actually issues. There's two, two issues. military leaves and one family leave, and somebody probably going to to another country for a month. Uh, these are all separate things. Okay. So again, the assumption is there's going to be a bit of a strain on the remaining to make to do overtime to cover those shifts. I guess my only concern is, you know, it's not really a concern, just more of a heads up. Um, I can see this happening again next year. Yeah, you should plan I'm for it now. Ahead. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. In fact, I'll make the motion to approve, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, an increase of 40 hour carryover for one year for the police department union members? Second. Any further discussion? I'll go off and discuss I'd be in bit. favor of that as long as at the end of the year we don't exceed the number of hours that were on the contract uh, for the carryover that they need those hours be paid out at the end of the year. I wouldn't want to see it carried over, you know, past the year. Correct. Because I think there's a what was there, there there's a time limit. Uh, I mean, there's a carryover amount of what was it, 60 hours or whatever the hours were. So at the end of the the calendar year, I'd like to see that that was paid out. I don't want to see that carried over, you know, and a cure core, a cure more than what the hours of the contract allows. Right. I don't, I don't mind it for that one year. So if if the uh, if the amount is 120 hours that they can carry over, and they've got 125 at the end of the year because of this, we pay them out those five hours, so they exactly. don't exceed the 120. That's what you're saying, correct? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. How often does this happen? First time. It's first, is this the first time? For them, yeah. I think yeah, that there was a time that myself, uh, during the pandemic, time. I was able to do it. Okay. Yeah. That's it. You know, fairly stress, stressful job, and the time off and away from the office and out of the car is important. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, paying them off is better than anyone carrying more or losing it. Um, 
but the time off is, is definitely equally as important. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, vacant building and property ordinance. So this was, Joe, is this something that you might want to? This was brought out. And um, so again, I uh, didn't reinvent the wheel. I went looking and uh, plagiarized with pride. Um, this yeah. document. My best, best practices. <laughs> What's that? Best practices. Best practices. Okay. We'll go with that. That's much, much better terminology. Um, I looked at three or four and tried to, you know, find the best out of all of them and what fit the town of Berlin the best. And this is what is a result of that, this draft. Um, it's far from perfect, but it's a place to start if we want to go that way and have an ordinance for that. Um, this is a place to start, kind of baseline it we get to, to fit what we think the needs are. And what brought about the uh, need for this? Well, uh, I think it was me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so there, there are some, some, we have some vacant buildings in, in, in Burlap, and some of them have been put out, you know, for the whole world to see on social media. Um, I also know uh, uh, recently, um, like K&W just closed their doors. You know, and that's that's off the beaten path and not, you know, very visible to, to the traveling public. And with um, the discussion of Hilltop closing their doors to some of the... Mm, the, the a a reduction in residents. Reduction in residents, whatever that might be. Um, I was just afraid of what where they might be taking up residency. And, and so I said something to Vince, and that's when you did his homework, came up with this document. But that K and W building is that the one on Granger Road, by the way? Sorry about that. It is. What K and W? Yes. Is it on Granger or is it on uh, Industrial? It's in Granger. You have access. Of, the rear access is on the Industrial. Yeah. Real. Okay. So the, the real question with this is. Do we want to start the process to have this ordinance? In other words, you know, I draft it, make it public. It's got to be out there for a certain number of days. We have to have public hearings on it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you can stop and look at it now. The only, I mean, we got, there are probably several buildings that are vacant. There's at least, at least two within a mile of each other on the very well play road on each side of the bowling alley. In this ordinance, is what constitutes a vacant building? Like, is K&W, they're probably going to be storing equipment and stuff like that. It's not going to be probably a daily use thing for a while, but what would constitute it being vacant? If somebody has a property that is used for storage, it wouldn't necessarily be vacant. So how, how do you determine that, I guess, what you're considering a vacant building? It's kind of defined in Section 2. There's a number of bullets, statements in there that kind of define that, again, for discussion. Right. And the, the trouble I see is you have Staples building is still vacant. Has been for a while. Yeah. Yep. And I wouldn't worry too much about that falling into disrepair. Yeah, it's not necessarily vacant. That is storage for shops. They are using it? They are using it. Okay. Actually, Dave, I think section four even breaks down the definition. The definition's a bit better. I'm just seeing if I can pull it up while I'm on here. Okay. And if we were to improve, approve this, this would require a um, building safety officer? Well, we can change the wording, right? Mm -hmm. This is really just a draft to spark the discussion tonight. Mm -hmm. If if the board elects to move forward with that, then I'll, I'll clean up the draft. I will, uh, you know, schedule the put a schedule together that shows the public hearings, um, you know, the public notice. It's got to, you know, go in the paper. All those things. I'll put a schedule together um, with a cleaned up draft for the and get it out to the board to review and comment on, and then have it at the next 
next meeting or the meeting thereafter to start the process. That's the real question is, do we want to start the process to establish this ordinance? I can see I can see the need for 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 such an ordinance. I, I you know without reading over what it is, I I think that maybe it should be investigated whether we we go for forward with this, uh, and and maybe put it on the next meeting to to dig into it a little bit, give us some time to dig into it. I agree. Yeah. I concur as well. I think that would give us the time necessary for the review in advance. And thank you for your time putting this together, Ben. It's all Joe's fault. And for your Welcome. suggestion, Joe. Oh, no. <laughs> you call this Joe's fault? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion on this one. <laughs> I make the motion that we table uh, this discussion um, until we can review it more in its entirety and bring it back to a future select board meeting. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, throw up the two roads in discussion, or for discussion and approval to me. Yes, again, yeah, you'll see in your package. Um, uh, three documents show the location of the roads and a picture of actually one of the roads, the, the Browns Mills extension portion as well. It shows a better defined. Um, Mr. Tim, would you like to talk to those? Uh, so I guess which one you would you guys like to start with? Start with Browns Mills. Okay, so Browns Mill extension, you guys are all familiar with it. it just Browns Mill goes over, crosses the road, takes the right, goes out to the private road. Uh, Brown Mill Extension is a short little road. I don't even know how it became a road at this point, but it's probably 50 to 75 feet long. It's just about enough to get a truck off the normal road and it's kind of a pain to deal with in the winter time. There's not a lot of place for snow, and um, pretty much we're plowing into somebody's driveway. Um, they had some concerns down there last year that they didn't like the way we were plowing it uh, because there's no place to put snow, and they thought we were leaving an excessive amount of snow up in their driveway causing damage to their property and so forth and it's been that way as long as i know nothing's really changed on the way we've been doing what we're doing down there but they said that we've been causing property damage for a lot of years i guess so like i said it's it's just barely long enough worth of town road to just barely get the truck up in there and then there's ledge on both sides and we got to push it up around the ledge and dump it off. And um, so that was what, are, what are the statutes as far as throwing up a road? Again, there's a, a lengthy, lengthy, there's a well-defined process that we have to go through as far as putting out notification, holding public, I think it's two public hearings um, before to bring it to the public. And what are the requirements to take and change it from a class three to a class four? Um, that's defined in the orange book, and I don't know those off the top of my head. I'd have to look and see what's required for that. But I think it's something similar as well. To change that, we have to go through a public hearing, at least one. What makes more sense to me is that throwing it up, just taking turn it down to a class four or a trail. And the town still has the right of way. And we don't have to do maintenance to it. That's that's a good option. I will uh, I'll look at the details for that to, and uh, I'll bring that back to the board. Hey, I think that. it's the same, Tim, for um, for uh, what is it? Uh, 
can't find a name for it. Town Highway 74. 74. 74. Town, Highway 74. 74. Town Highway 74. That's the same story. Well, that one, yeah. That one is, we just push up in there and push it off to the side, but um, I can't believe nobody's ever been hit there yet with the amount of traffic because we have to back back out into Route 12 and it's pretty much you're backing out into there blind mm. with the dump truck. Uh, people go into the opposite lane. You know what I mean? We're half out. I've plowed it a couple of times, you know, when I'm going by for Mike and stuff if uh, it's not done yet. And uh, you'll be half out in the road. People just go into the opposite lane to go around you instead of giving you the right away of backing out into that highway. Like, so there's no place to turn around in there. And it's somebody's going to get an accident down there sometime for plowing 70 feet of road that really isn't enough for us to even be in there with a dump truck. Was there a drive off of that? It, it used, so I've gotten a few stories from it. We used to plow all the way up to the house to turn around up in the dooryard. The house burnt. Um, probably close to 20 years ago, I think now in that time frame, And there was nothing there for a while. So they didn't do anything to the road. And then somebody bought it, I believe, or at least rebuilt the house. And then they asked for the bottom of it to be plowed up to the railroad tracks. Mm. And they kind of started doing it again. And, uh, but like, they didn't want, they didn't want us to cross the tracks. They didn't want us to go up in there. That and there was no place to turn around once they re redid everything up there. Huh. So I don't yeah. know what. Yeah, they, they, this is the case where there's there's just there's one house on the other side of the tracks that this goes to, one home. And you're saying there's about seventy feet of road to to Route Twelve, then? Yeah. I don't think it's that long. Yeah, it might not even be that far. Where there's a resident on there, I guess we got to see whether we can revert revert that to a class four. I don't know that you can though. I know. I, I was saying that too. You, I think that the people that are going to be affected have to agree to it. Exactly, and I think that you're gonna you create a a liability issue if there was a problem up there and trying to get the fire department and stuff up in there where we don't, you know what I mean? Where it's already an established class three road or something. I, I, I don't know what you do in that situation. That's where we have Vince to find out. Yeah. Is there a class four or trail that goes beyond that house? Don't believe so. Not that it shows on the map. Okay. Right now, I believe the town maps show it only goes to the railroad tracks. And then it's theirs from there out. Yeah. I think the only reason they ever crossed the tracks before was just to get it to a place to turn around. There's no place to put a turn around there neither, is there? No, there's, a, there's an old cellar hole on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, there's all the trees and the railroad tracks. And it's, I, we cleaned it up two years ago to try to make it a little easier to plow. And it, my memory serves me correct, it's quite a bit of ledge on the left-hand side out in where the trees are. Of course. Would it be safer to plow with a pickup truck? We don't have somebody that runs a pickup every time. <laughs> Not every time. Well, I guess probably the thing to do then is, then is just reach out to these folks and start the discussion. Okay. So I'm just looking at the orange book now, and it basically I'm just going to plot some things. This is a class four highway is legally established highway. That's not a one, two, or three. We do that. The select board shall determine which highways are class four town highways. Um, it talks about trails should not be considered highways. Blah. 
why is it important to keep a class four? Do they have to maintain class four highways? Maybe maintained to the extent required by the necessity of the town, the public good, and the convenience of the inhabitants of the town, or maybe reclassified using the same procedures for laying out highways and meeting the standards uh, in section 302 of this title. Well, do I have a motion to allow Vince to move forward with this? So moved. Your second? Second. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, okay, town encampment policy. So that's another lovely topic for discussion. Um, so, I know, three weeks ago, or longer, there was a meeting with um, Barry Montpelier and Berlin, um, town administrators and, and police chiefs and such, to talk about trying to prepare for the reduction in the residents allowed on the program by the state at the hotels. There was going to be some people vacating. Um, just examples of numbers, maybe 40 people, say, for example, in the area together, um, basically on the street. How are we going to manage that? What's, what, what's it going to look like? You know, nobody really knows. Um, well, I'll tell you to talk a little bit. They had been working with the leagues of cities and towns in advance of this, um, and they had developed this encampment um, policy procedure, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, hand in hand with VLCT. So VLCT's had a look at this. Again, this has been, uh, I, I asked, well, Barry did as well, I asked Montpelier if we could use that as a baseline, if they would send it to us uh, to develop one, and obviously for me to bring to the board as well, to see if they wanted to move forward with the development of this type of policy to, to help Really, it's a tool to put some, some guidelines in place on how we manage encampments. We, we know we have them. Uh, we know they're out there. But what do we do? If, if a small group of people put an encampment in a place that makes residents or others feel unsafe, how do we manage that? There's no guidelines for that. What do the police do, right? What are they allowed to do? So this kind of puts some guidelines to that. And I'll try provide some direction as well. That's under under the fish and game regulations, and there is a an enforceable thing in 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 their laws about campsites. It's yeah. right it's right in the state thing, and and that if it's pushed, they have to enforce that. That is a state law that is enforceable under the fish and game regulations. Really? It's clearly spelled out in there. I know we need something, you know, with locally, but this is on a state state thing, and it's right in the fish and game regulations about uh, these campsites. No, and, and, but, but does that talk about campsites on private land? Private land, private private yeah. lands I, and state lands, hmm. both. It says right in there. I mean, there's a whole whole thing on it. I know that they don't care about getting a ticket, losing their hunting and fishing license, but it, it is in the regulations. Hmm. Okay, well, again, that's something I can certainly take a look at as well. Yeah. No, I, I think we need to move forward with something, but but there is that is because I remember we had that encampment down there off. We were talking off of uh, River Road down there. Or, yeah. Um. So. And, is that, I guess my question on that though, Dave, is um, if that's fish and game, that, that's a state enforced one. If, if fish and game decide that they're not going to do anything and it's still a problem for the town, what's the town's recourse at that point if we don't have? Yeah, no, we, I agree. We need one, but there is, there is, there is one in place with, on the state level. Now it's just anything else, it's enforcing it. And, but yeah, I do feel that we need something on a local level as well. Because that would be my concern. We call we call the, the state on it; and they don't do anything. 
Well, or, and then also the cleanup provisions. Hmm. They're working in here. I mean, you know, if they come out and get a ticket, you know, like Dave said, it doesn't really matter. But at the end, you know, if the, if the stuff is still there, we're not it's them. back to us to clean up anyway. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Well, you look at you know, the, that's like that, that site down there. It's a mess down there, and that's on the landowners to pick up a lot of that stuff. And 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 there's all kinds of hazardous debris down there. Yeah, the, the one off Dog River, though, most of that is located on the town portion of the property, not the landowners, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. For, fortunately for him. I had already, I've already talked to Vince about the possibility of having communities, uh, people who have to serve their community service do some of this. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too because I got a okay. response from them that I've included in your package. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. So anything else on uh, town and campus? No, again, the, the, the question is the same as the previous one. Is it something that uh, we want to entertain moving a bit forward with. Does the board want to review it? I mean, it's a, it's a preliminary draft. It's very similar. Um, I made some subtle changes to differentiate between obviously Montpelier, um, completely not completely, but a, a lot of differences well, between them and us and how we would, what we have and how we would do things. So there's some, some subtle changes there, uh, but it's a, it's a preliminary draft to promote some discussion if we want to move forward with it. Well, you should take a look at state statute with fish and game also, so you can plagiarize that. Well, for sure. I will. I, I'll Best draw this <laughs> Best practices. Best practices. Exactly. Okay. And then again, I'll uh, at, at some point, I'll, I'll do similar to my play. I'll run it by the cities and towns to get their perspective on it um, as well. Well, a uh, uh, motion to have Vince pursue this. So moved. Exactly. Any further discussion? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so down in Riverton, there's a swimming hall just uh, next to the bridge. That's the trestle. The trestle out behind the fire station, further down. Yeah. yeah. Well, not behind, but no. anyway, is that, is that like close it's to not necessarily a park or anything? But but that would fall underneath this as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. If there was one there, yeah, for sure. Okay. Is anywhere in town. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, emergency management plan annual update for approval. So you have a cop there's a hard copy on the on the table of the I think it's 46 pages, 47 pages. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce, how can Bruce, 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 Bruce can talk yeah. talk to you. He can summarize it for you, I'm sure. Um, yeah, just that the state every year requires an uh, update to the emergency management plan. Uh, must be submitted between town meeting day and the 1st of May. So, uh, been updated, some things deleted, some businesses that are no longer in existence, some things have been added, uh, names have changed in a few places, that sort of thing. So, uh, the rest of it is all basically the same. Um, it, something that's come up is that the, uh, the contact information in the appendices is, uh, it changes quite a bit and it might not be a, having an annual update is sufficient. So I was uh, hoping with your uh, permission, the main part of the plan is the first uh, four or five pages. That's the state provided guidance it has our the most of the crucial information in it and the significant contacts so that that's something um, that you're signing the implementation plan uh, to, to say it was approved the uh, the rest of it all the appendices or annexes are uh, just uh, contact information addresses emails that sorts of thing so I'm, I'm hoping that that can be updated as needed and not have to uh, go through this review cycle every you know every time but uh, and my hope would be to update that on a more frequent basis um, 
it could be anywhere from as whenever we find something needs to be changed, like the uh, bowling uh, alley uh, family center down there. It's going to have new ownership. We don't have all the details on that yet. They're going to be closed for a month here, I guess, and, and reopen in June. So hopefully at that time we'll know more about it. And so I would put that in the plan then. Um, that sort of thing. But uh, the main part is the, like I say, those first five pages. We added some information that the uh, state review of the last year's submission noted that we didn't have in there. And they wondered if it was an omission or if it was something that should have been filled in. And, and I've clarified that. Uh, so hopefully they're, the state will be happy with it this time around. There won't be any holdups with uh, getting it approved. I move that we adopt the local emergency management plan uh, effective May 1st, 2023, and authorize the vice chair to sign on behalf of the town. Okay. Second. second. Okay, second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Very thorough. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, approval of license, permits, vouchers, and applications. I've got the script. Thank you. I move that we approve payroll warrant 23-22 for payroll from April 9th, 2023 to April 22nd, 2023, paid on April 26, 2023, in the amount of $60,937.90. Further payable warrant 23G20 with checks 22905 to 22944 for payables in the amount of $156,147.33. And also the April Arkansas Bank Statements for the General Fund Sewer Water Checking Account. And lastly, the April General Journal Entries. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Motion carries. Please don't forget to sign them. Um, There's a lot to sign on the chain. Vince, you said we had, uh, since Tim's here, let's take and do the AOT bridge. Yes. Okay. Good point. So uh, in your package, you'll see, an, uh, you should see a note from Mr. Goudreau, Adam Goudreau from the state. Um, he's looking, what he's basically just looking for is for the addition of the sidewalk on the new bridge in Riverton, uh, confirmation from the town that it will maintain the sidewalk in the winter. He wants that via email and writing, and then they'll, then they'll proceed with the conceptual plans for that sidewalk on that bridge. And then they want to work on a formal agreement after that. So that, that's just a one pager in your package from them looking for that. Tim, is it going to, with the design of the bridge as it is, is there any way that the town can go through there with a plow truck and just wing the snow over the edge? I guess I haven't really seen the, the complete design, but like it was an open sidewalk compared to what's there now, right? Right, yeah. As I understand it, though, the sidewalk is going to be six inches above the roadbed. Or some measurement above the roadbed. It's raised to some, some Yeah, to separate the road, roadbed from the, from the sidewalk. I'm assuming it's going to be kind of like the, um, the Bailey Bridge there by the high school of Montpelier. You know, that style. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if there's any way you could take and go down through there with, the, with one of the plow trucks and just wing it over. I mean, we could probably definitely wing it off, but you know, I mean, without having any speed, it ain't gonna go over the rail. If it's more, I guess it depend on the the style of rail that they put on the edge. Like if it was open enough that the snow would go through it, then yeah, it would probably open up and stay open. But if it's if it's going to hold the snow, 
we're end up we're gonna end up just packing the snow up against the rail. Gotcha. And it'll fill in the sidewalk eventually, and we'll have to go down with a loader or something. And, and yeah. but then again, like, our, then we're gonna have to set up a sign package in Route Twelve, and like, it's, it's a lot of. Not that you know, I mean we can do it all, but it's you know I mean to set up a sign package in Route 12 and go down there with a loader and clean that bridge off when it's a state bridge. Like, I guess we'd have to figure out the right way of doing it at that point. Whether you know what I mean if that wasn't working, we might have to look at a different option. Well, when they were when they were discussing the design of the bridge, I thought it was going to be a fairly open guard, not a guardrail, but a uh, railing system, probably just steel tubes, it's like, yeah. like a fence. Again, it's all conceptual right else. now, there's no final design on it. So it's, so it's my understanding East Montpelier has this type of agreement already in place? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Right, right, right there at the, uh, 14 and right. 2. Yes. Um, can we get a copy of that agreement just so we can kind of see an idea of what in fact, the state's going to be expecting from us. I mean, initially, I'm a little bit hesitant about agreeing to this until we see exactly what's going to be expected of us. I don't think we're really equipped to take on this responsibility at this time. But we yeah. do want to see what we can do as far as serving the needs of, of residents in that area. Well, the other thing is, is the bridge as it stands now, one of the residents has been snow blowing the bridge, or the, at least the, uh, the sidewalk. They've been, somebody's been clearing the sidewalk. I, you may know more about it than I do, too. I don't know a lot about it other than somebody's been doing it. If you get down to it, that's probably been a liability for the state or for the town, allowing them to continue. See, I was thinking of I'm thinking more of the state. More the state. Yeah. If the resident was doing that, what if you could take and put them on as a part-time employee for just the snow blowing, or if the liability is now worth it's a liability for the town. Uh, right. but, 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 but it's not. I don't think it's necessarily unreasonable one, depending on what the state would expect us to do. Yeah. Well, I but, I, but I, you know, I'd, I'd like to see more. Yeah. And so, right. just the concept sure. that we're going to take care of this, you know, what, what does is, it look like? What, what is exactly are there going to be requirements for us? Or, you know, after so many inches, or you know, after, after, storm, after we, yeah, and if if we go through and clear, it and the state comes through and covers it up again, are we going to have to go back out and just all sorts of stuff like that? Which I'm sure the other towns have already. It's worked yeah. out, we <laughs> hope. And here again, I don't want to plagiarize anybody, but there might be best practices out yeah, there. Absolutely. <laughs> Somewhere. When does this have to be into the town? I mean, into the state? Again, they, they'd like it as soon as possible, like anything, but I'll, I'll, I'll give them a call tomorrow and tell them what I'm doing and uh, see how they respond to that, and I'll tell them where we're at. Well, I'm, I'm skeptically open-minded on this, I guess I would say. Okay, um, entertain a motion to have Vince pursue this. So I'm doing a lot of pursuing tonight. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. So Vince, you'll have that uh, for us next meeting? Yes, I'll have okay. something. I'll have copy of what Eastwall Player does, what their agreement looks like, and hopefully a, a, a date that the state needs our answer by as well. And if I get that in advance, I'll also forward it to you guys in between so you have a chance to look at it before the meeting as well. Okay, uh, mowing bids? They're all right here. Just give it to Joe. Sorry, but no. <sighs> Let's see, 
Mr. Dexter. Let's see, I'm writing to submit a bid for the 2023 roadside mowing season. Uh, post bid is a single pass. Mowing all set, uh, all class two and three roads, $5,000. And the second pass on paved roads would add $700 to the bid. Uh, mowing in question is scheduled to be performed using a John Deere two, uh, 25 555 uh, goes into 90 horsepower equipped with a 5 foot boom mower. Yes, the the 5000 is this the, I believe the same as last year's. I don't think he raised his price. Did uh, you uh, speak to him on the multiple passes on the, yes. on the bridges and whatnot? Yep. Yep. Tim, Tim actually talked to him as well. Um, again, just for everybody's information, we had one other person contact uh, about bidding. Uh, I asked him to provide me what he was interested in bidding on and what we had. I got no response. Um, it was published in the newspaper for five days as well, the, the RFP for the bid. Um, this is the only bid that, uh, that we had received. In his insurance? Yep, he has it and he'll provide the information again. He, he's done it for us for the last three years, four years? He's been over the town for probably five to six years, I think. How do you compare the bid against the requirements in the RFP? They meet, he meets all the requirements. Okay. Yep. I make the motion to approve the bid received from Donnell Dexter for the 2023 roadside mowing season. Proposed bid being class two and three roads, $5,000. That's the first pass. And second pass on paved roads would be the 700 additional and the discussion that we've had with him and the fact that he has the insurance and he's been doing a fine job for us over time. So a total of 5,700. 5,700 with the first and second pass. Second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Okay, minutes. Approval of, did you find out about that? In your package, since you asked, <laughs> there's a statement from uh, the uh, Leagues of Cities and Towns. Um, uh, their uh, legal office on their evaluation of that. And they basically say the minutes belong to the board, uh, not the individuals that were or are on the board now. So it just belongs to the board. Um, they think it's fine for the current board to decide whether to approve previous minutes. Okay. Approval of March 20th, 2023 minutes. I make the motion to approve said minutes and with just one um, change and that's to take out page five because it's blank. Otherwise, perfect. Okay. Second. By the way, they also went on to say that there is no state law that says minutes have to be approved, but many boards do it as best as best practice. Well, that's good. It didn't over there. That's um, right. Any other discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, minutes for March uh, April 3rd, 2023. I make the motion to approve the Monday, April 3rd, 2023 minutes with just four individual punctuation adjustments on one on page three, one on page four, and two on page five. And I'll give those to Vince so that can be done. It's punctuation only. Here, a second. Any other discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, those in favor may say aye. 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 Right. Motion carries. Uh, minutes for April 17th, 2023. I make the motion to approve the minutes of Monday, April 17th, 2023, with just one, um, 
not necessarily a revision, but I recommend on page three to uh, check on the spelling of Raylene Mounier's first name and include her last name. Other than that, everything else is fine. Your second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, round table for all. Nothing to see me, thank you. Dave? I don't have anything, so. Tor? Nothing, sir. Joe? A couple things. Um, May 13th is a Saturday. That is going to be open house for about 70 fire departments within the state of Vermont. Um, there has been uh, a lot of articles in the paper, um, a lot of articles in the, in the news anyway about um, just uh, tough to find staffing. And so, like I said, there's about 70 fire departments that are uh, partaking in this and, and Berlin is one of them. Uh, just to uh, allow t people to stop in to see what they can do as a volunteer. And it's not necessarily um, all, you know, putting on the gear and going to the calls. It's other, uh, other duties that also happen at those stations. Um, that's May 13th. Do you know the times? In Berlin, it'll be 10 to 2. 10 to 2. So the other thing is we have um, a vote coming up in August, right? Is that what we, we decided upon for that's what the petition? For. That's what it's petitioned for. Um, if we go forward with this, I would really like to see uh, a non-binding vote set out for the town residents to determine if the Berlin Fire Department becomes part of the municipality or stays uh, independent. It's kind of just a get a get a feel for where the town residents how they uh, they look at that. Well, non-binding vote doesn't necessarily have to be doesn't necessarily have to be uh, warned, does it? I don't I'm, believe so. I, I'm not it's sure. More that. Of a yeah, it's more of a survey. So yeah, it's more of a survey, but I can I can check. Speak to Rachel. Yeah. Find out through PLCD as well. So. And as, as soon as we uh, find out if that's still good to move forward on, um, I think I'll put it out there in Front Porch Forum. Um, out on social media, we'll get a lot of town residents to come out, if nothing else, to answer that one question. Yep. Thank you. Okay. In the end. Thank you, uh, I can't think of anything else at this point. Vince? I only have one. Oh. And that's to answer your question about uh, getting a hold of the state on their program for help. Again, it's in, his response is in your, in your package. Um, they're evaluating, basically, they're evaluating the future of the community restitution program. The program was shuttered during COVID and it's struggling right now. Uh, once they decide on the program, uh, they'll ask the district manager, Mike Sweeney, um, for our area to touch base with us um, based on whatever their decision is on that program. So I was just saying it wouldn't be just for us. It'd also be for Mount Pillar Barry. Yeah, well, he, now, he's the guy that's going to reach out yeah. once they determine what they're going to do with the program, if they're going to bring it back or do whatever. Yeah. So the well, decision just, is there's no decision right now yeah. on that. I was just saying it'd be an easy way, or not an easy way, but it'd be a way to take and get some of these campsites cleaned up and get the trash Shovel out. Shovel some bridges in the winter, maybe? Hey, that's yeah. an idea. <laughs> there is another option, not necessarily available to us this year, but is the uh, diversion program. Yeah. It's outside of the yeah. Department of Corrections program, but they, a, lot of, a lot of their clients are under community service uh, requirements as well. Um, I was my only concern about this year is they were not on the town meeting warning, so they're not funded by us for the coming year. But other than that, I can still reach out though and see if there's yeah. any interest there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I Start think the even discussion. I think even with the uh, with the uh, community service from the, the Department of Corrections, we still had to pay something. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing's going to be free here. 
certainly, I mean, when they were shoveling, you remember they were shoveling the hydrants, the fire hydrants for the town. And they were, they were um, I think it was maybe five dollars an hour or yeah, something. Yeah, it's not much. Yeah. Not for the, the but the trouble, the only thing that would, that would bother me about having them do the shoveling on the bridge, the br it's, it's not something you can do on a schedule. Right. So it, it's yeah, when the snow flies. Right. Yeah, yeah I'd, be, I'd be hesitant about the, the bridge, but um, you know, some of the other duck thunder encampments and, yeah. and stuff might be more of a possibility. We still have to shovel the hydrants. And then snow, you stop with the hydrants and you move to a bridge. <laughs> it's a scheduling thing. Yeah. But no, right? I mean, when they did the, when they did the hydrants, it, it, they didn't do it every time it snowed. They just, they wouldn't clear them out. We've, we've had, we've had uh, that, that program, and we've had people from that program come in and, and paint rooms in our, our station. Yeah. Something really very similar to the size of this. These little fresh. Yeah. We definitely, if if they're going to clean up on these encampments, we just to do our due diligence and kind of bring their awareness of of, of some of the hazards there uh, picking up. Because I I did walk one of them and there was a lot of needles and stuff around there, so they they had to have some supervision and uh, protective gear. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure that that the. DOC can provide, or they have a place where they can get some gloves that will be suitable. For that, yeah. yeah. Anything else, Vince? No, that was it for me. That was it. I thought of one other thing. I was hoping Joe would speak to, um, I've seen that he's already spoken, I've seen it in the media, um, regarding the two Norwich University students that assisted the fire department. Graduation was at Norwich this past weekend. And yeah. now they are moving forward in their lives, and you have their names, and I wanted to see if you would, you know, vocalize it yeah. here so all town residents. So know. Peter Sandry and Reno George. Excellent. Um, they were, they came to the Berlin Fire Department from Norwich University. They were with us for three years, um, and, and very vital to the, the department and the community, and and. Truly, the department and community will miss them. Mm -hmm. yeah, very much so. so. And I thank them for their service. Yes. It's very beneficial to all of us. Have you reached out to Norwich for some more? <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, thank you. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That last one was quick. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. We'll see you later, Dave.